I'm going to read a comment over on my review. This is really good. This is Omen428. Um, probably the closest review of the game that I share an opinion on with myself, and I appreciate for saying it without worrying about the backlash. I know some people aren't going to like what you said, but you explained why it's your favorite and why you like it better than the other games in the franchise. No game is perfect, and I'll agree that Veilguard is not perfect, but it is the most polished out of all the Dragon Age games I've played. It has a different art style that you have to get used to, but the world and graphics are beautiful. The game opens up more and gets better the further you get into it, which made it feel like Inquisition to me when you had to go back to areas later at either higher levels or after certain story beats, which is something I loved. I also agree that the fetch quests can be a little annoying, but every single Dragon Age game has had them, and you've always had different ways to level up or gain power. I was initially worried that it would be more linear than Dragon Age Inquisition, but it turns out that it opens up way more the further you play. I had some friends worried about it, but when I told them to keep playing, they realized the same thing I did. The combat is great, but does take some time to get used to. You have to find the right mix of characters and figure out the primer and detonation system, which works quite well. I love the difficulty settings because it gives everyone the chance to experience this game. If it's too easy, turn it up, and if it's too hard, turn it down and just enjoy the story. I had friends who couldn't beat Baldur's Gate 3 or Dragon's Dogma 2 because they couldn't figure out the mechanics, so they ended up just giving back, giving up and going back to earlier games. If they all had that god mode option, especially for the casual gamers out there, I feel like more people would be less intimidated to play big RPGs that they would normally just avoid because they didn't want to waste their time or money. The thing that bugs me the most is how people believe it's a woke propaganda game when it simply has small parts of inclusivity. Besides picking pronouns at the beginning, like a lot of other games, and you can absolutely skip that part if you don't want to, just like with certain characters and their quest arcs being skippable. Although I do recommend playing that arc because it's deeper than I expected, but I do understand that if you don't like that stuff, that's fair, but you can just completely avoid it and enjoy the rest of the story. Too many people act like one character has ruined the entire game, but most of these people were never really going to play that character anyway, or the game itself. The last thing is on the writing, which I agree can be campy and too handholdy with over explanation, but I found that was more towards the beginning of the game, so I think that was meant to help out new players to explain the lore to them, but it can come off weird and handholdy to diehard fans. The overall story is one of the best and makes you want to keep playing, which is what all of us want in an RPG. When you don't want to stop playing because you want to finish a quest or story, that's what makes a great RPG to me. I'm sorry if this was long, but if you don't want to, but if you don't explain your reasons, then you can't say you like a game these days. There will be people that have a completely different view than I did, which is fine, and some people will agree with me, but we shouldn't get mad and attack others for having a different opinion than our own. I hope people will avoid the noise from people hating on it that didn't even play more than an hour of the game just because they heard it was woke. If you give this game a chance, I believe most people will be pleasantly surprised, and if you won't because of what you heard from a couple of other reviewers, then I hope you aren't missing out on a good game that you might have liked just because of all the negativity surrounding it from a few people. Also, this is my opinion on the game, which doesn't mean it's right for you, so hopefully you can enjoy it as much as I did thanks holy shit omen 428 i think you just won comment of the day um i'm clipping this out for youtube guys hang on i gotta timestamp this two two one best comment um this this person gets it omen 428 You know, I mean, you basically boiled down my 30-minute review into a nice, condensed couple of paragraph. Um, yeah, this is Omen428. Let me, let me, I, I, can I show this on screen really quick? Um, I have to open this up. Just that no one, because there will be someone out that will accuse me of just making this up. Um, this is Omen428. That is a wall of text that I really wish was broken up into paragraphs, but that was a brilliant comment uh, to read through. Um, I think that, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, 
the biggest issue I've seen, and we were talking about this earlier in the stream, the hand-holding nature of the early quests, definitely, it's there. It's hand -holdy. But like he says here, um, it's there for the new players. And unfortunately, you have a lot of old veterans who took offense to it and are like, no, I don't need a game to hold my hand. How dare they hold my hand? I'm a veteran RPG player. I'm a veteran of the series. Blah. And then they went out and wrote nasty reviews about how the game is, you know, hand holdy and has childish dialogue. And it's like, no, it's just the early stages of the game are simplistic um, because they need it to be um, to get new players onboarded, which is great. Mike says whoever wrote that, kudos. They should be the main reviewer for IGN because that was way more heartfelt and informative than anything most sites have produced in years. Bobonia says, uh, that's a great comment. I feel like a lot of gamer dudes would be very threatened if they couldn't say, I beat it and they can't because I saw the whole thing to just to feel superior to other people. Yes, it's very true. Um, Ernie says, nothing wrong with a game that's made for gamers who enjoy a challenge. Both types of games have their place. Yeah, but also a game like this where it has an adjustable difficulty. Um, that's a big deal. And I think that a lot of companies will take a look at what Bioware has provided here and say, hey, this is cool. We need to provide more options. I love the fact that they dropped the f they dropped in there the whole aspect of he has friends who couldn't beat Baldur's Gate 3 or Dragon's Dogma 2 because they couldn't get the mechanics figured out or maybe they couldn't push the buttons fast enough, as is the case of Dragon's Dogma 2. Or people like me, um, I, have, I have readily admitted that I would love to play Elden Ring for the story. But I refuse to play a game that won't let me adjust the difficulty. I won't do it. Sorry. I have no desire to punish myself in that way. I don't I don't play games for that experience. I appreciate that those games exist for the players who want them, but that's not for me. And I don't demand that Elden Ring provide that to me. I wish they would, but I don't demand it. And I don't go out there and say that Elden Ring is trash just because they don't have a difficulty slider for someone like me. Because I recognize that I'm not the target audience for that game. Whereas this, I'm definitely the target audience of this game. Because I love RPGs, I love Bioware, and I love their games. Um, so I appreciate... I mean, that was, that was definitely the best comment of the day that I've read. Probably the best comment of the week, if I'm being honest. Um, I feel like less people would be... I feel like people would be less intimidated to play big RPGs that they would usually avoid if games had more difficulty sliders and god mode options. And he's not wrong. Like, custom difficulty options are a big deal. Um, I'm in a test group now for an upcoming AAA game that's coming out next year. And one of the number one most requested features that I'm seeing in the Discord with that project is um, can we please have custom difficulty sliders to make this our own experience? Um, and I think more and more companies are going to need to start providing that based on what we've been seeing in recent years of good games coming out that are providing lots of accessibility options. I actually said before this when I played Star Wars Outlaws a couple months back, I actually I praised Star Wars Outlaws because of its uh, accessibility options and for example um, the puzzles in that game hacking computers and picking locks it was fun the first 20 or 30 times I did it and then it became boring and I am so happy that they provided the option to just turn that off so that players like myself don't want you know that we don't want to deal with it anymore we just turn it off and then you can play the game and get the enjoyment that you want out of it um there's a ton of accessibility options in star wars outlaws um and this is just the next level of that conversation you know um dragon age Vilgar took it up to the next level so i'm really glad to see that other people are appreciating it and understanding what it is um because it's not about like Bubble Only says, a lot of games are stuck in the whole giant bag of hit points equal difficulty. Um, I'm glad I can roll my own level of challenge. Um, the 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 aspect of you know when I because on the one hand I saw the girl on TikTok I've mentioned who was weeping with joy because she was able to turn God mode on and and beat an encounter where she was just 
struggling against and she wasn't able to get the precision down and she was just feeling frustrated to the point where she wanted to quit and then you know they offer a god mode and suddenly she can beat the game and suddenly she can have the fun that she wanted to have and enjoy the game that she wanted to enjoy that is a powerful thing and a game studio that can provide that to their player that can give that expense experience to their players they are winning in my book and i know you're going to have the people who roll their eyes at that and be like good you're not actually you know gamers need to be challenged otherwise you're not actually gaming and oh well, let me close my eyes and mock the game for being too easy um you know those are opposite you know kind of polar opposite viewpoints um i'm always going to applaud a company provide for providing more options to the player base um, because the more people who can play your game the better long term so great comment Aukman. that was uh really thoughtful and i wholeheartedly agree on all points my wife is a good example of that um she would she loves red dead online but she would get way more enjoyment out of Red Dead Online if she had like a god mode and full aim assist because she sucks at aiming. She's, she's, my wife's in her mid forties, um, and and she doesn't want to have to learn. She's never played a, you know, she's never played video games. She didn't grow up, grow up with controllers like I did. So like, for her, this right here is super fucking intimidating. Like having to learn button combinations and a whole new skill set in your forties. Like, that's not easy, and that's not something that should be mocked. Like, companies providing options for those players is a big deal. Bobolini says, you talking about the reaction of that girl to the No Death City is what got Mel to buy this game. She's not a gamer. She's a first responder who happens to love Dragon Age and isn't interested in grinding against it. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing.